Hello and welcome to Roper Mountain Science Center. My name is Jasmine Poor and I'm the virtual field trip teacher here at Roper Mountain. Before we get started on our program of how we use the land, I want you to ponder a few questions. And that is why would early settlers have chosen South Carolina to call home? And why does your family live in South Carolina? All right, just a reminder to keep your Microphones and cameras turned off and we will use the chat box for communication. So let's start with what do we need? Many of um, many people list reasons for living in South Carolina being they want to live near family or the weather here, activities around um, South Carolina. All of those are very good, but those are all once. We want to think about the needs and actually what people need in order to survive. So think of shelter, food, and water. And think about how we can get those needs from the land. What natural resources are here in South Carolina that the early settlers would have needed? Think about that for a second. What natural resources do we have in South Carolina that are here that the early settlers could have used or needed? Why would they have wanted to live here? I'll give you a few moments to think about that. All right, it looks like Dana is ready for us down on the farm. So we are going to go ahead and check in with her. And she's gonna share a little bit more about why early settlers would have chosen to live in South Carolina. Hello students, my name is Dana Lackey and I'm out here at the Living History Farm at Roper Mountain Science Center. And for today's lesson, we are talking about how people interact with the land. And we're going to be looking at some natural resources too. Some terms that you may have already discussed in your classroom might be biomes and climate zones and things like that. And so a biome is an, a place that involves or includes the climate for an area, the vegetation, the animals that live in the area. And biomes are big. So we're in a forest biome here, you might say, um, but it is a very large area. You might have uh, various ecosystems included in the biome. Um, there can be many, many. And so you're thinking about large areas. Now, a climate is part of that biome. The climate zone that we're in is a temperate zone. And so temperate means that we have uh, relatively mild temperatures. We don't have extremes during the year where we have months of snow or um, weeks and weeks in the 100 degrees and um, just extremes in weather. So our temperature, our climate around here, our weather around here um, is very temperate, uh, more towards the mild side. Now, you notice that I might be dressed a little bit differently than some of you. I have on clothing that represents the late 1700s time period. And out here on the Living History Farm, that is the time period that we represent um, all the way up into the mid 1800s. And so in that time period, you know that people came here primarily um, from our area, from down the Great Wagon Road up north, and they settled in this area because it was very agreeable. They had space to settle. Um, they had natural resources that made it easy for them to set up their farms. Now, when we talk about natural resources, you know that we mean something that is found in nature, like trees or these things that are on the table that can be used for something, that people use for something. So it might be that it is something that's grown and used to make a fiber. This is flax. 
something for food, something for dye, all kinds of natural resources that they would use to make their lives um, agreeable and safe and happy. And we have a cabin right here next to me. This is actually a corn crib. And you know this natural resource. We have wood here that's from trees. These logs have been shaped and they have been notched and stacked together. And so this is a good example of how the settlers used a natural resource to create their homes. The home, or the corn crab rather, is sitting on rocks. And so rocks from this area stacked up to hold the building in place and to be able to create steps to get into the building. Another use for natural resources. Um, this is a bucket of water. So in our area, we have a decent amount of rainfall. Water is readily available and the settlers would set up their home near water so that they could survive. This bucket of ash here, this is hardwood that's been burned and we have ash from it. And they would use this to amend their soil. We put it in our chicken pen and the chickens will eat this. It's got minerals in it. And so this natural resource of wood goes on and on in its uses out here on the farm. We're gonna go in our garden in just a minute and we're gonna have a look around at some things in there. All right, so let's talk a little bit. Um, Dana mentioned about biome and I wanna make sure we go over that a little bit more. So I want you to think of a biome as a large area and that includes the climate of that area. So if we think about climate, I want you to think of weather. So if you think of weather or as a day of weather as one tree, I want you to think of climate as the forest. So we have certain weather conditions here that we can expect in South Carolina because of our climate, meaning the average temperatures and weather conditions that we receive over a long period of time all average together. So here in South Carolina, we have a humid subtropical climate. We have warm summers and mild winters or hot summers and mild winters. And so we know that that is part of our climate and certain plants grow better in a climate like we have here in South Carolina. If you ever take a seed packet, you can take a look at the back of that seed packet and it will tell you when or where that plant can be planted or that seed can be planted. And that's because of the area's climate and where that plant will grow to maturity the best. So we need specific amounts of sunlight that it could receive and temperature. Also vegetation, as we talked about like plants that you would plant with seeds, there's certain vegetation that are able to grow in certain areas. And so when we talk about the vegetation, we're talking about the plants that grow. So like here in South Carolina, we, have, we can have nice big trees. They're called deciduous trees, meaning that the leaves fall off in the winter. And then that biome is also made up by the animals that live there. So that all encompasses um, what we're talking about the biome. All right, well, let's think about back to our basic needs and what we need. So when we think about our needs, we need water, we need food, and we need shelter. And how can we get these things? Well, we can get them from the land. We need trees to build our houses. We need and eat. Um, we need plants that can grow so that we can eat them or farm to get our food or land that can have animals growing on it so that we can kill them and eat them as well. We need enough water for our plants um, or for us to drink, fresh water for us to drink as well as our plants. And also early settlers would have possibly used those waterways for transportation as well. So nowadays, think back to what we have to get. Now we still need shelter, we still need food and we still need water. Nowadays though, we probably are going to purchase or rent our homes versus building our homes from scratch. Or if we do build a home, we're gonna have probably a, a group that builds it. We're going to get our food mostly from grocery stores, not from um, our farms out back, right? We would need space in order to grow enough crops to sustain our families 
for the entire year. Now, some people can go to farmer's markets, but a lot of times you can check where your food comes from by looking at the labels on it to see where that food actually was transported from, from where it was grown. And then people would have settled near those rivers or bodies of water to have that fresh water available to them as well as fresh drinking water um, for transportation. So let's talk a little bit more about those waterways. Now here in South Carolina, there are no natural, um, naturally occurring ponds or lakes. All of our lakes are what we call man-made through damming, but you can see how many waterways we have in South Carolina. That provides a lot of opportunities for people to settle near areas where they could have gotten that um, fresh water. So very, um, very important for them. Now, the earliest settlements would have been around the um, South Carolina coast along the Atlantic Ocean near Charleston, and that would have been for transportation as well. They would have used um, the Atlantic Ocean, the early settlers from uh, Europe, that is. Now, there were quite a few um, Cherokee settlements. Our upstate area was used as Cherokee hunting ground. And then slowly the settlements moved away and out from Charleston and from um, Virginia areas. People would move down from Virginia and even Pennsylvania into that upstate area. But that was closer more towards um, the Revolutionary War time. All right, so now I have a question for all of you. What is your favorite gummy bear flavor? What is your favorite gummy bear flavor? And I want you to think about this because we're gonna use this a little bit later in a demonstration, but what is your favorite gummy bear flavor? If you don't like gummy bears, that's okay. You can think about what your favorite, um, what your favorite candy is, a candy that has multiple things in it. All right, we're gonna check in with Dana now. She is back down on the farm. Let's see what she has to share with us about farming and the early settlers. All right, so we're down here in the lower part of our garden area out here at the Living History Farm because I wanna show you this plant here and I especially want to show you our soil. We want to talk about the resources that we have in our soil. So obviously this plant is cotton and it represents one of the many plants that settlers grew here. This one in particular, of course, was grown as a cash crop and able to make money off of it. And it grew well here as well as many other things because we have naturally rich soil here. We have soil that is naturally high in N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And so the settlers grew their plants, but as you might imagine, these plants would deplete the resources. Some plants take more resources than others. Cotton is one that's known as being a very hungry plant, and it gobbles up resources in the soil, different nutrients, different components that make up the soil. And so just as you might prefer a certain type of candy, a certain flavor, a certain color, then plants are similar in that way. Our soil here, you can see, is really good looking garden soil, um, in part because it has um, a decent amount of organic matter in it, or loam. It does have a little bit of clay and it does have some sand in it, but it's the organic matter that makes it so very rich. And one of the things that the settlers would have replaced as they were growing and rotating crops and, and then taking a break over the winter, replenishing the soil and planting again to make sure they have what they needed. Thanks for joining us out here. I hope we'll see you on the farm real soon. So let's talk a little bit more about that soil that Dana mentioned. I want you to think of that soil as nice and rich soil and soil is very important um, because it's what our plants need in order to thrive or grow and nice and healthy and we're able to eat that, eat those fruits and other parts of the plants. So we're very lucky in that much of Roper Mountain area here is very rich, has very rich soil and there are lots of different nutrients in that soil. So even though the soil looks pretty similar probably, 
I want you to think of it as like gummy bears. So as all of you decided what your favorite gummy bear flavor is, team red and team clear over here. So if I was to take a big goal of bowl of gummy bears, I would think of those gummy bears as rich soil. We've got lots of different colors. Well, after I sat with a bowl of gummy bears for a few moments, I would eat the red and I would eat the clear. Mm, those are my favorite. So I would eat through all of those and all of a sudden I would have some yellow and orange and green gummy bears left over. Now, just like plants, plants will desire certain nutrients over others. So what happens is, is that those plants like cotton will deplete that soil and that soil won't be rich anymore. It won't have all of the nutrients that the next year's crop of cotton needs. So there are a couple of different things that our um, farmers can do. One thing that they can do is they can add more nutrients to that soil. They can add more organic material, compost. They can add fertilizer to it, or they can rotate the crops. So the way that I think of rotating crops in my house is that I would take that bowl of yellow, orange, and green gummy bears, and I would put it out on the table for my kids because my kids actually really like those gummy bear flavors. So then they would eat down the rest of those and we, then we could create those, um, add more organic material and we would have a rich soil again. So farmers are able to rotate crops so that you are able to um, replenish that soil. So it's important that we think about soil as we look at how plants can thrive and grow and we can get the most amount of them from our food. So we need to think about, for example, if you were to think about the desert, would we be able to grow crops there? Probably not as well, right? We don't have as enough water. We don't have um, the nutrients in the soil. It's very sandy. So we're not gonna have, or very rocky. We're not gonna have the nutrients in that soil naturally. So we're gonna have to add a lot of things to that soil, which makes it not as easy for those early settlers specifically to come in and do. So they would have really enjoyed this land here in South, upstate South Carolina. Let's go back to those questions that we pondered of how or why would early settlers have chosen South Carolina to call home? Well, we would have used a lot of those natural resources from the land that we would have used those trees that were grown. Our soil is good enough that we could have grown trees. We would have then planted our crops because we would have needed um, food for us to eat. We would have used that rich soil that we have here. And then we would have added those nutrients back into the soil or rotated our crops in order for us to maintain a healthy garden. And then why does your family live in South Carolina? And think about how early settlers made their decisions of where to live and where people now make our decisions of where to live. I wanna thank you all for visiting us here at Roper Mountain Science Center. Again, my name is Jasmine Poor, and I wanna thank you for taking your time today to learn a little bit more about how we use the land. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.